As St. Lucians and visitors alike gather to celebrate Junior Quayle's 40th anniversary, cultural advocate Jeremiah Norbert, minister in the office of the Prime Minister, reflected on the festival's historic roots. This year, the beloved Creole event returned to its original birthplace, a move Norbert said is a meaningful nod to the festival's beginnings and a powerful reminder of the cultural pride it inspires. Norbert was among the many who embraced the island's vibrant Creole music, food, and traditions on a weekend marked by unity and nostalgia. I'm very content with what I've seen today. Um, it's, it's lovely to see um, the people in their colors and, and, and their Junior Creole attire. Um, naturally, you know, given the, the area, you would always get a few difficulties with, and challenges with traffic. But I applaud the, the efforts of the police for being able to manage it. Um, not to stand in the challenges, people were still able to come in. So all in all, I'm very happy with what I've seen. I mean, this year is 40 years since we hosted the first Junior Creole and the first Junior Creole was hosted in Monrepo. So we're happy that we, after 40 years, we're hosting it again in Monrepo. So all in all, I'm very happy. For Norbert, Junior Creole represents more than just a celebration. It is a testament to St. Lucia's rich heritage and the community's dedication to keeping traditions alive. As crowds immerse themselves in dance, music, and culinary experiences, Norbert expressed a deep sense of contentment with how the festivities have unfolded, seeing the events as a platform where local talent and Creole culture shine. This gathering, he noted, is a celebration of community bonds and have strengthened over the decades. We see a variety of food, cuisine, people are enjoying the food, um, I've spoken to several persons who, who are very content themselves, very pleased with what they've seen and what they've had. So I'm very happy with today's proceedings. While the festival has drawn record crowds and increased traffic, Norbert remains undeterred, considering this a small price to pay for an event that brings such joy and unity to St. Lucia. He views the influx of people as a testament to Junequil's popularity and importance, expressing appreciation for the energy and enthusiasm that accompany such a mass gathering. Norbert believes that ultimately, these festivities showcase the heart of St. Lucia's culture and provide a rare chance for residents to celebrate their heritage openly. Persons involved within um, the creative industry, especially those who can speak and sing and act in Creole. So we saw um, different acts, we saw spoken words, we saw different bands, we saw the drummers, we saw a, a variety of entertainment on the stage today. Right now we're in Ras Africa in the background, we saw Big People Business earlier, um, quite a few people we've, we've seen there and we look forward to, to that type. I know that the artists and them are very excited, they're very happy to have a platform where they too can showcase their skills, they too can have a crowd, a platform where they can sing and today we've seen that. So I'm thankful for us being able to provide them with that type of platform. The people are happy, you can see them moving to the music, you can see them dancing, you can see them attentively listening to the spoken word. So all in all, I think it's a real, real, real good show. As the island embraces its Creole roots once again, Norbert's reflections underscore the significance of Jeune Creole in preserving and honoring St. Lucia's identity. This year's celebrations have not only brought nostalgia, but also rejuvenated a sense of pride and shared history among St. Lucians, with Norbert celebrating every moment as a testament to the spirit that keeps Junequeol thriving, generation after generation. For Choice News Now, I am Kenise Baptist.